Well, hi everyone and welcome to Community Journal. We really appreciate you joining us. We have an interesting show for you today and uh, here we are at the end of May already and I can't I believe can't it. I can't believe it either. Um, April and May uh, are definitely, this year, very, very wet. <laughs> and very cold. <laughs> and very cold. <laughs> I, I keep putting my coats away and taking them back out again. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, our thermometer went down to 49 degrees at one point, which mm -hmm. this time of year is ridiculous. And we've had almost four inches of rain uh, this month. So uh, wet and cold, which is, n is not what we expect here, but uh, we have no choice. Well, some years we don't have a spring on Cape Cod, and mm. I think this year is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're right. And uh, um, well, hey, listen, you know, it'll get warm and we'll all be complaining it's too hot. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. And this is true. Um, we've got a few announcements here that we want you to be aware of. We're going to start right at the top of the <coughs> show with one of them. Uh, Eileen, go right ahead. Yes, one of them is a concert. Um, play it. Forward, the Bernard Greenhouse Concert featuring Amet Palid, and I hope I didn't mispronounce your name, and the Mount Vernon Virtuosi Orchestra will be performing on Wednesday, June 12th at the First Congregational Church in Wealthy at 7 p.m. The proceeds will be benefiting the Outer Cape Health Services and advanced tours of the new Wealthy Health Center will be available to all concert goers on June 12th from 5 to 6. So you can do the tour from 5 to 6, and then the concert starts at 7. And to purchase tickets, I imagine you need to contact them. Um, let me see. I'm not sure where mm. that is. I don't see it on there. But no. uh, uh, I would say call. Maybe call. Is there a number there? I don't see, or well, probably the Outer Health Services. Yeah, Outer Health Services, yes, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I would go on, uh, on the, the on web. On their website. Yeah, yep, definitely. That's a good idea. Yep. yep. Very good. Yeah, www.outercape.org. That sounds like a good plan. All right. Uh, <laughs> very good. Sorry about that, that I didn't have more contact information. Yeah, but, but they'll, they'll get it through there, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Eileen. Uh, the Harwich Conservation Trust is um, uh, sponsoring a, a very interesting uh, tour. It's the Capabilities Farm Tour, uh, Saturday, June 8th. Uh, join in welcoming the spring growing season with a tour of the Capabilities Farm in Dennis. This is co-sponsored by the Harwich Conservation Trust, the Dennis Conservation Trust, and Capabilities uh, the tour, the Capabilities Farm, on Route 6A on Saturday, June 8th, from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. Um, the tour is with James Barnes, the Director of Social Enterprise with Capabilities. So this sounds like a very interesting tour. The cost is $10 per person, and uh, the proceeds benefit um, Harwich Conservation, Dennis Conservation, and Capabilities, and the space is limited. So. Uh, you do have to get, um, you should go on their website to find out more. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's, um, you can go on howichconservationtrust.org for more information. Again, it's $10 per person from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. on June 8th, 2019. And this is rain or shine uh, since you'll be visiting greenhouses and the location is in Dennis, the address uh, with registration confirmation, the space is limited. So advanced registration and payment is required. Okay, and I do have a quick addendum to add to the concert. Oh, that good. We were All right. Discussing in Wellfleet on May, on June 12th. Uh, proceeds from this concert will benefit the rebuilding and expansion of the OCHS Wellfleet Health Center. And that was recently featured in the Cape Cod Times. That's right, it was. And yeah. the concert program will include works by Mozart and Tchaikovsky. Oh, wow. Very good. So, uh, thanks, Eileen. You'll be enjoying a wonderful concert and helping out people. Very good. Which is good. And uh, we now do have an update from the Harwich Conservation Trust. Michael sat down with uh, uh, Tyler Mycath and uh, um, Michael, Tyler, and Dinah. So the three of them sat down together, and let's get up updated with the Harwich Conservation Trust. Conservation Trust with Michael Locke and Tyler Maycast, and uh, I think we're going to be talking turtles today. Mm -hmm.
Talking Turtle. That's right. So. <laughs> yeah. It could be a new monthly show. It could. That's right. Talking so turtle. talk turtle to me, Michael. Okay, all right. Well, this time of year um, in particular, uh, we have um, turtles on the move, right? Mm. Uh, looking mm. uh, either for uh, mates or nesting areas. We're focusing on two uh, local turtle species in particular. Um, uh, several years ago, we started a, a box turtle observation program, reaching out to uh, folks, see if they could volunteer their time uh, and sharing their observations of uh, box turtles throughout town. A couple different goals with that effort. One, provide a meaningful volunteer experience. We love to engage folks uh, out in the nature, uh, land, water, wildlife. Um, there's a, a box turtle photo there by Janet Mattia. Look at those mm. irises. The, red, the males actually have red irises. The females um, have more brown irises. So uh, this is a, a species at risk, right, um, due to primarily habitat loss um, and mortality uh, crossing roads, which they'll do this time of year. Mm -hmm. So we want to know among those goals, again, for this box turtle observation project, um, to understand where they're appearing in town. Um, and again, look at that, crossing that double yellow line on a local road. Um, wow. Right? Uh, that brilliant sunburst pattern, orange, yellows, just a, just a spectacular animal. Um, yeah. And um, then they disappear into the woods, the sun spackled, uh, you know, pine needle strewn, oak, pine, woodland around us, and um, we don't see them very often. And again, they're a little bit more active this time of year. We want to know where they are around town in relation to protected areas, as well as areas in need of future protection, so we can continue to conserve their habitat. Um, so that's not a very large turtle, is it? Because no. it's on that yellow line. It doesn't, doesn't really come over on that's much right. on either side of that. Yeah. Thin yellow line. Think of think of a, something like a grapefruit, a little bit larger than a grapefruit, yeah. somewhere between grapefruit, cantaloupe, um, right. somewhere in that size. Um, and hard to see. It almost blends in with the yellow. Yes, and even in more <laughs> difficult to see in in our, our local woodlands. Mm -hmm. But um, of Tyler, you want to share more about that project? Sure. Yeah. Um, so we are looking for volunteers to be reporting sightings of eastern box turtles. Um, aforementioned. It's a species of special concern. It's on the Massachusetts Endangered Species um, Act list, mm. so uh, which provides some legal protection for the species in the state of Massachusetts. Um, there cannot be any collection or poaching or hunting of that turtle from a legal standpoint. Um, and also uh, spotted turtles, which we're adding this year. Um, it's a semi-aquatic turtle uh, known to Harwich. They spend um, a good deal of their time in wetlands, but they also are found foraging in uh, upland areas. And this time of year, the females are seeking out nest sites as well. So um, in contrast to the box turtle, it does spend a lot of time in water box turtles being mostly terrestrial turtles. Um, the spotted turtle is a small turtle, only reaching about four and a half inches long. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a beautiful individual. Mm. Um, so the yellow spots on the carapace are very characteristic. The carapace is the top of the yeah. turtle shell. And the yellow and orange markings on the face of the turtle and orange on the plastron, or the bottom of the shell. Uh, this is a species that is declining. It's of significant conservation interest. Um, really relies on wetlands for uh, foraging. Uh, they eat a lot of frogs and aquatic insects and also tadpoles and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I did see, unfortunately, a road-killed individual uh, a couple weeks ago on uh, undisclosed location, but here in Harwich. Mm. Uh, so that got me thinking a little bit about adding this species to our purview mm. and seeing how we can track um, where they are persisting in Harwich and with the same goal of seeing where they are in relation to protected areas and uh, what areas might need future production. Particularly as this species may become a species that is added to the, 
endangered species list in Massachusetts. It's listed in other New England states. It's um, listed in Canada as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it's under threat throughout its range for the same mm -hmm. reasons that Mike outlined. Mm -hmm. So um, you're looking for volunteers to help spot them. Yes. So, yes. But so, you yeah. also mm -hmm. want people to be alert, anyone, whether they're volunteering or not, you want them to be alert. And I had read somewhere, and tell me if this is, this is good advice, is uh, you should carry a shovel in your car in case you need to move a turtle off of the road if you see a turtle in the road, mm. and that you can very gently pick up the turtle on a shovel and move it to the side of the road, but that you have to be sure that you put it in the same direction that it was going. <coughs> is, this, is this correct? That's just that's generally correct. Of course, we also emphasize personal safety first. If uh, there's a road a turtle crossing the Route, road. Route 28. And, right. And of, yeah. if, if somebody can feel like they can safely pull yeah. over and that's, help the turtle cross in the direction it's going, provider, then, yeah. then um, yes, they, they, could, uh, they could help the turtle move in that same direction that it was headed. Mm -hmm. uh, box turtles and, and spotted turtles you could just pick up um, uh, more towards the, the back end of the shell mm -hmm. um, and move across. If you're attempting a snapping turtle, mm -hmm. that's different. That's where you might have a snow shovel in your car. Mm -hmm. um, of course, to, some people yeah. may not be able to discern the difference. Right. So I think maybe that's why the general mm -hmm. advice was given. But, uh, yes. You know, not everyone has a full knowledge of the different types of turtles and they might mm. not know that something was going to snap. Right, right, so good point. Best to be on the safe side again, mm. perhaps. Mm. Snapping turtles are quite a bit larger, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. several times larger. Okay. And they have ridges okay. on their shell, which neither of these species have. I see, <coughs> then you'd really need a snow shovel. Well, you, that may be a species that some people are not able to handle because they can weigh upwards of 30 pounds. Right. I was right. thinking yeah. balancing out on a shovel might and be whereas a, too, yeah. a spotted turtle actually okay. can weigh under a pound. Right. Mm. They look tiny. Yeah. They are very small. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, when people do encounter the box turtle or spotted turtle, which is our, our species of focus with this effort, mm -hmm. um, we ask that uh, if they can snap a photo. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. and send us that photo. Email is fine. Um, everybody seems to have a camera on their phone these days. Yep. Um, and then also relay information about location, mm. um, right. maybe the nearest road crossing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, or a GPS point is even better. Or a GPS uh, coordinates, yes. yes. Uh -huh. um, and then we can help uh, fill out the uh, rare okay. animal observation form and send that data to the okay. state. So this is yeah. for the average person who happens to see a turtle. That's right. But you yeah, also want to um, hear from people who are willing to be official turtle spotters, is that right? Or is this basically what you're talking? We about? don't distinguish between those two okay. No. descriptions. Yeah, we okay. are looking for. So you're not registering people. For no. Turn oh no. no. Okay. It's so not like Herring County. Yeah. And, okay. it, and okay. it, correct. Mm -hmm. And you never know when you're going to come across these turtles. Yes, right? of course. Yeah. 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 So it's yeah. sort of more incidental. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, other information that's very important is time and date. Mm. Um, okay. And. Just to piggyback on what Mike said, what we do with these observations is we will actually send them into the state. The P Department of Fish and Game has a Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program mm -hmm. that uh, deals with these species of conservation interests and on the state's endangered species list. Mm -hmm. um, they keep a database um, because they are looking to fund sometimes land protection projects in those areas also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So uh, I think we're on to Cornelius Pond. Is that right? Yeah, just a you quick update. To talk about the woodlands there. Right, about the mm -hmm. stewardship mm -hmm. uh, chapter mm -hmm. for this property now mm -hmm. that uh, thanks to uh, the support uh, from so many across the community, mm -hmm. um, including town meeting voters um, and the state's conservation partnership grant program, you can see the property um, shown in red there, um, encompassing most of the westerly shoreline of Cornelius Pond, more than a thousand feet of shoreline. Also road funded on Queen Anne Road. Now that, that the money has been raised to um, acquire and preserve that property, we are um, working on establishing a trailhead. Some may have seen the trailhead put in place um, 
there by um, the town highway department. Thank you, uh, Link Hooper and Boo and the crew there who were able to, um, to so expertly um, level the area between the road and the parking area. We are next going to work with the Chatham Harwich um, Newcomers Club, their woodworkers group, to finish mm -hmm. installing a kiosk that they first uh, constructed um, not too long ago. And then also Tyler will be working with AmeriCorps Cape Cod to actually place the trail on the ground. Mm -hmm. So uh, this property, as you're seeing from the photos, has a wonderful diversity of habitats, including meadow that you see here, mm -hmm. the shoreline that I mentioned, forested upland, and also pockets of wetland. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful area, and it's kind of like going back in time, uh, walking uh, through this area, and we hope with this new trail that's evolving, uh, stay tuned for uh, a news about when it's officially open, okay. people can enjoy it themselves. Yes, and I'm yeah. sure they will. Mm. That's great. Yes. And finally, you wanted to talk about... Is it volunteers? An, uh, our walk schedule. The walks, yes. that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's yes. right. You have walks coming up. Lots of walks on our website, uh, harwichconservationtrust.org. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But very interesting, we have this neat uh, walk um, uh, this time of year uh, called the Native Nightlife Walk in the National Seashore. Mm -hmm. uh, Todd and Marcus lead these walks. You've had experience with them too. Um, yeah, Tyler. they're wonderful walk leaders. Yeah. Very knowledgeable. They uh, really engage with the group. Um, and it can be very different on every walk, mm. depending on the mix of the group. So it's um, and on what you see, I would imagine. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this particular walk, you see Marcus there. This particular yeah. walk, uh, and that's a photo actually of folks on this Native Nightlife Walk mm -hmm. before it becomes more of that twilight time. Mm -hmm. So this takes place roughly in the six to eight p.m. range, <laughs> that um, transition time between uh, diurnal or daytime wildlife activity and crepuscular or dusk time activity for wildlife into the nocturnal or nighttime activity um, uh, span for, for wildlife. And folks make their way uh, through the National Seashore in East Ham along a wooded trail, some bike trail, and then out to Coast Guard Beach looking out over the Atlantic here. Led by Marcus Hendricks, um, native Nipmuc and Wampanoag, Native American heritage, mm -hmm. and 12th generation Cape Codder Todd Kelly. They talk about Native um, American traditions and activity um, over time in these areas, as well as early colonial history and how um, Native Americans and colonists intersected at different points in, in Cape Cod history. Mm -hmm. There's a photo, right, as that um, daylight wanes more. Yeah. We hold these walks around the time of the full moon. Uh, don't necessarily see the full moon at these walks, but uh, certainly talk about its influence on uh, wildlife um, activity and also Native American and uh, traditions over time. We partner with the East Ham Conservation Foundation on those walks. Um, so when people register through our website, they'll receive directions. It's $20 per person for those walks. We're okay. also offering a number of free guided walks uh -huh. uh, with other walk leaders. Okay. So you can check our website. Yes. And when is the first one, just to start us off? Uh, June 17th, uh, okay. Monday, June 17th. Okay. But we're holding them also uh, around the time of the full moon in uh, July, August, and September. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, it all sounds wonderful in spring. I think is here. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it not today. Felt pretty spring like, <laughs> summerish, springish, summerish over the weekend, but uh, it will get back there. And yes. thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having us. Filling Thanks. us in as always. Thanks, Dinah. This is Dinah Lane for Harwich uh, Channel 18. Thank you. Well, we thank Michael and Tyler uh, for sitting down with uh, Dinah, bringing us up to date. Um, they always do such a wonderful job, and uh, again, their photographs are amazing. I mean, some of the close-ups of the tur turtles were just incredible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, definitely. They, they do a great job. Uh, Eileen, you've got a very important message there. I, I can't, do. I can't believe you're reading this. So. I know. Tis the season. Beach stickers and transfer station access for the town of Harwich the sales will start on June 10th. The current stickers are good right through June 30th, so you don't have to hurry and rush to get it, but they will be sold at three different places. Harwich Community Center, 100 Oak Street, right here. 
town hall treasurer's office seven thirty two main street and chamber of commerce one school house road and the resident taxpayer disposable sticker is now one hundred sixty dollars and the resident taxpayer beach sticker is now thirty dollars very good and again not available till june, june 10th. 10th remember that day yes and okay. your current stickers are good through june 30th there you go so, so there you go don't have to worry <laughs> yes i know everybody likes to relax <clears throat> and everybody likes to maybe do some meditation but you never find time uh, here is a great program it's uh, discovery through the self-portrait this is meditation, sound bath, collage, and paint. Um, uh, L. Raquel, T. Fox, and L. Balboni are all putting this on. Uh, this is June 1st from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Harwich Cultural Center, rooms 204 to, 20, uh, to 212. I don't know if it's the rooms in between, but at least 204 mm -hmm. and, two, uh, and 212. And uh, these are several sessions uh, for this. Uh, June 1st, uh, September 14th, October 26th, November 16th, and they run from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And again, the sessions do cost one session is $65, four sessions $50 each. So if you do four, you get a much better deal, obviously. You can find out more, and this is, um, you know, just a way that you learn how to meditate and learn how to relax and uh, you know t today in today's world we can all use that, that sounds that's, good to me <laughs> <laughs> it sure does and you certainly can find out more uh, by uh, gmailing laura balboni art at gmail.com that's laura balboni art at gmail.com <clears throat> So, Very good. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that's a that's a new one on us. Yes. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Uh, do you want to do that one now? Yeah. Why yes. not? Yes. Yeah. Why not? Um, the John Levin Memorial Conference: A Positive Approach to Dementia Care with Keepa Snow is going to be held on Wednesday, June twenty-sixth, from eight thirty in the morning to four thirty in the afternoon. It will be held at the Barnstable Performing Arts Center, seven forty-four West Main Street in Hyannis. And it's a free conference for family and professional dementia caregivers. Keepa Snow is a nationally renowned dementia care education spe specialist, excuse me, with a background in occupational therapy and close to 40 years of clinical practice. This day-long workshop covers strategies, techniques, and information to help lay and professional caregivers move past common misperceptions about dementia and significantly improve the lives of people living with dementia disease and their caregivers. And this is so important, especially sure in, is. In, in, on Cape Cod. Uh, for more information, you can call 508-896-5170. And to register, you can go online, www.alzheimerscapecod.org. And I will spell Alzheimer's for you because that's frequently misspelled. Yeah, very good. Uh, www.alzheimerscapecod.org. Ah, okay, very good. And uh, <coughs> uh, that's a very, very important one. It is, it is. Yeah, definitely. Sadly, it is. Yeah. Here's another important one. Um, you know, something that people do not like to talk about. They talk about it way too infrequently. Mm -hmm. And uh, here is an opportunity uh, to give you some great um, information. It's called the Pre-Planning Luncheon. Are your affairs in order? This is going to be taking place on Monday, June 10th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and it's going to take place right here at the community center. And, um, you know, people find out when it's too late sometimes that they have not gotten their affairs in order. And uh, this is a wonderful workshop. Uh, the program highlights will include Robin uh, Kelly, the town of Harwich Cemetery Administrator, Emily Mitchell, the town of Harwich Council on Aging Director, uh, Angela Angelini, Senior Housing, uh, Ju uh, J Jamie Noons and uh, Patty Coville, Hospice 101, uh, Christine Callahan, Flower Angels USA, and Julie Brooks, How to Declutter Your House Now 
so your kids don't have to do it later. Boy, is that one important. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, it is, Jack. <laughs> you know, each speaker will take about 10 or 15 minutes. I think she's meaning me on that. <laughs> Uh, each speaker will take about 10 or 15 minutes from 10 a.m. to noon. Uh, vendor tables will also be set up around the room for private question and answer sessions. Uh, see the COA front desk for a complete list of speakers. Uh, you must sign up at the Council of Aging. Space is limited, so please remember that. Space is limited for this. RSVP by calling 508-430-7550. Five zero. That's five zero eight four three zero seven five five zero. And again, that's Monday, June tenth, uh, from ten a.m. to two p.m. Lunch is from twelve to one. That's lunch, important. Oh, that's too. important. <laughs> lunch is from twelve to one. That's very important. <laughs> very good. Uh, we'd like to show you uh, this next one that uh, we did it last week, but we think this is just an amazing uh, change that has taken place down in Harwichport. Um, the update of a building there that's well over 100 years old, um, Murphy General Store. So if you missed it last week, this is an opportunity for you to catch it. And if you've, uh, you know, it's just amazing what they've done there. Yes, it, it was originally the Monaghan Jewelry Store. It, it was. Yeah. So let's take a look at that again. And uh, Murphy's General Store. Here we are, out and about, for the first time this spring, doing the Chamber Update. I'm here with Cindy Williams, and we're actually, as you can probably see, in Murphy's General Store. We are so excited to be here. Uh, I gather the store opened a couple of weeks ago, is that right? The store opened a couple weeks ago, and we did a ribbon cutting this past uh, weekend with a great group of people here coming in and buying and just seeing all the great work that um, Heather and Jay did, the owners of Murphy's General Store. And just thank you guys for letting us be here today because I just wanted to show, as we open up for the season um, this weekend um, with Memorial Day, the newest addition to um, our family in Harwich. And it's just been a great addition, great to see um, the transformation from Monaghan's to um, where we are today. It looks so great. I, I was so excited when I walked in here. It really gives a feeling of ambiance of a general store, and I think it's going to be a real happening place. I think so, too. And yeah. just what's so cool about it, each room has a different theme to it. You know, you start off when you walk in, there's some seasonal things. There's um, soaps and goodies for, you know, risotto, sauces, maple vinegar. There's so many <laughs> things I wanted to try, and then I came in yeah. for our ribbon cutting, and uh, Jay said to me, don't get the cinnamon toast popcorn. So what did I do? I got the cinnamon toast popcorn. <laughs> and then yesterday morning. it's addictive. It's addictive. Oh, I see. But I thought, all right, I was making my coffee, and I grabbed a handful the other morning. And I said, well, it says cinnamon toast on it, so <laughs> why not, right? right? But there's so many food. fantastic yep. things mm -hmm. in here. I love one thing. Well. Um, as I was walking over, I was uh, saying to someone, they even have vinyl records here. Yes, I know. Everything that. from Stray Cats yep. to Aretha. They have the Aretha Now album. I know. Which is very cool. But the thing that really struck me, I think, is the smell. There's something so delicious about the way this place smells, and that that is so important to me, and I think it's important to a lot of people. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a delightful. It's a cool, it's a cool it's place a for sure. It's and uh, a smell to behold. Absolutely. So I hope lots of people will come. Absolutely. Um, and after our update, I'm going to have uh, Heather and Jay join me for a few minutes just to kind of introduce them to everyone, too. Great. So we'll get more with them. But okay. as we know, it's Memorial Day weekend coming up. So that means the Harwich Chamber hours now are officially seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So um, for you everyone love that. love this time of year, don't I, you? I love all year round. But yeah. this is fun because now we see all the regulars coming, you know, our second homeowners that come in and get mm -hmm. beach stickers, which will be going on sale June 10th. 
um, and we do them seven days a week at the chamber, but our hours will kick in um, Friday, we are 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, Saturdays 10 to 4, and then Sunday, oh, excuse me, 9 to 4 on Saturday, mm -hmm. 10 to 2 on Sunday. So we're excited. Those um, are very accommodating hours. They are. And um, it's going to be a beautiful weekend. So uh, yeah. super excited for that. Terrific. And, uh, and I think that means it's almost beach weather. It is. And, and that means, that means beach, beach stickers. stickers right? <laughs> which is always fun. So yes, beach stickers will go on sale uh, June 10th. Seven, de say seven days a week at the chamber through Labor Day. So um, we will be uh, starting that um, and going through all of the new things that have happened over the winter. A lot of work's been done um, in town on different committees. Um, we had a parking committee that, you know, we listened to what the town was looking for, what the residents were looking for, and the businesses. and. Um, so we came up with, um, there was an ad hoc uh, parking committee, which I had the pleasure of being on, and will run now through until 2020 next year. But um, people will notice the signs that we now have. Um, and, you know, a couple of the businesses said, we really need that universal P sign. So we got the universal uh, P mm -hmm. sign parking for sign. Um, parkings, mm -hmm. and we have that both at the Route 28 side. So if you're coming from Dennis or Chatham, you can see that there's public parking for you. That'll you know, be, yeah, that'll be very helpful. Well, it's so important because there's so many great stores, galleries, and restaurants that when they came into town, part of what they have to do to be a business is come up with a site plan. And you have to provide parking if you don't have it um, at your location. Mm. So, it, you know, there's a lot of things that go into the planning of that. And, you know, if you're within 300 feet of the municipal lot, that can be considered on your site plan, your parking. So we had to, you know, the committee did a lot of work on this and heard some great um, feedback from people. So the plan will be for this summer because we do need to try something. We've become so popular that um, there'll be public parking um, in the main lot, no beach parking, but we have 21 beaches and ponds, so we can mm -hmm. certainly help you when you come in for your beach sticker, tell you where you can go, what some of the early times you maybe want to go down to, you know, some of the beaches that people love, mm -hmm. uh, maybe more than others. But also what we've done is moved the employee parking to the side lot that we have. Um, that's a kind of an annex um, over by TD Bank. So that will be signed um, in the next week or so for employee parking so for that will help employees in the neighborhood exactly that don't have parking for themselves at um, mm -hmm. their business so that's been a big um, help and you know it's a work in progress yes. but um, mm -hmm. certainly it is something proactive to do it that is. the committee it came up like with it'll be very helpful. so we're excited yeah. about Good. that but there is there's so much happening um, so many great things and right. great anniversaries Isn't there a big anniversary there's a, a really huge anniversary, anniversary. Right? Brooks, Brooks, Academy. Brooks Academy yeah 175 years wow. so they're gonna have a birthday great. celebration on June 16th um, the museum and barn will be opening the new exhibits this year are um, I'm cheating on my notes and I was gonna try not to but Harwich goes to school and then the houses of Captain's Row as everyone knows, we have seven villages of Harwich, and West Harwich is the location of Captain's Row. So that's going to be a great um, exhibit for everyone, too. There's, there's so many wonderful jewels throughout our town. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Harwichport is, yes, the hub, so to speak, of the town, but Harwich Center has so much. West Harwich, East Harwich, you know, north and south. Each w village mm -hmm. has something mm -hmm. special. So excited and to these see. These exhibits will be highlighting a lot of Absolutely. Yep. So excited That's to great. see those exhibits. And um, the birthday celebration is on the 16th of June, 2 to 4. There's going to be a birthday cake and all kinds of great things. So I hope everyone will come out and uh, we'll be there um, and enjoy uh, the mm -hmm. celebration of that because it is. It's 175 years. The cool thing that they uncovered this winter, as everyone was uncovering things all winter, mm -hmm. um, a blackboard that used to uh, be yeah. at the school. At an actual school blackboard. So yeah. they put it under plexiglass. So it's going to be really exciting for everyone that visits the exhibits to see that as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And then also um, right in the grove up by the museum is the farmer's market. June 6th, get your fresh veggies mm -hmm. and goodies. Yep. Um, so that's that for June up there, and then kicking off our 10th anniversary road race. Ten years. Ten wow. years. So okay. we're super excited for that because that's our charitable foundation's way to give back to the Harwich mm -hmm. youth mm -hmm. um, through scholarships and grants for 
Little League and all kinds of great things. So registration is live on our website as well as um, registration forms in the visitor center. It's a really fun event and a fundraiser. It, it so is. It's, it's a great it's way. An excellent way to kick off yeah, the we're summer. Super excited for this yeah. year. Mm -hmm. um, and then as you said, summer, that means Port Summer Nights. Oh, yeah. And that kicks yeah. off Ju July 3rd. Mm -hmm. So the Wednesday right before the 4th of July. Excited to see everyone there. Um, and people uh, can visit all the shops, including this beautiful store. Exactly, yeah. um, the galleries Great. and everything. So the Guild of Harwich Artists is another one that will be open, but they celebrated 40 years this year as well. Yes. So there's That's just right. a lot, a lot happening um, in Harwich. So certainly, we're uh, happy to always share that with everyone. But I would love it if we could just have Heather and Jay come in for a quick mm -hmm. second. Just say hi so everyone can yeah. see who the, our new owners are of Harwich um, Ports Murphy's General Store. Hi, Cindy from the Harwich Chamber. And I am here with the newest owners, Jay and Heather, at Murphy's General Store in Harwich Port. We opened a couple weeks ago here, but did our ribbon cutting this past weekend. And just want to welcome you guys. I'm so excited. The store looks fantastic. Um, why don't you just tell everybody a couple things about what you have here? Wow. What do we have here, Murph? What do you think? We have um, a collection of a little bit of everything. We have uh, everything from t-shirts and sweatshirts to vintage vinyl records. We have food items. Um, we have books. We have games. We have puzzles. A little bit of everything. And I noticed that like it's you start when you come in, there's a, like a little seasonal corner, then there's a kitchen corner, and there's some great, I mean, I've already been in, spent a lot, a lot of money already, and so excited to have done that. So, um, cinnamon toast, popcorn. Yeah, let's talk about the cinnamon toast, <laughs> how we had to reorder. Uh, Cindy basically ate our entire supply of cinnamon toast popcorn, <laughs> and now we have to reorder the whole. No, I'm just kidding. You only ate one bag. But there's so much here for everybody. So I hope everyone will come out this weekend and check it out. But we're at Murphy's General Store in Harwich Port. And like Heather said and Jay said, there's something here from puppets for the children, vinyl records. Yes, vinyl records, children. They do exist. And jewelry, <laughs> sunglasses, sweatshirts, postcards. Just come and join us here in Harwich Port and uh, welcome Murphy's General Store here. Thank oh, you. and they are open. Sorry. Um, we're kicking off the full-time hours now. So That's right. This weekend, seven days? Yep, starting Thursday. We'll be open seven days a week. We're opening at 9, um, and soon we'll be staying open until 9 o'clock. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And Wednesdays, they're going to have the ice cream truck here for the Port Summer Nights. So we look forward to seeing everyone in Harwich Port and here at Murphy's General Store. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Well, if you haven't been there, you really should go. What a difference. And uh, Congratulations uh, to Jay and Heather. I uh, love what you did with the place. Uh, they, <laughs> <laughs> they have done a beautiful job. Yes, and, they really uh, have. You know, they're in time for the season. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's, let's wish, wish, you know, wish them tremendous good luck. And, and better uh, yet, go in and do it in person and 
Yeah, browse. that's right. Go in and browse. Go in and browse. Go in and browse. Yes. There's got to be something there that you can use, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Well, folks, that's our show for this week. We really appreciate you joining us. Uh, um, it's nice that you uh, tune us in. And please take advantage of everything we told you about going on around town and around the Cape. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>